Okay, hello friends, this is Yusuf here. Welcome to part 5 of our crash course on APA. So, let's continue where we have left uh, in the last video. Uh, so, we have seen how do we call the post endpoint on post APA using postman and we have learnt about some of the key things about uh, the post endpoint basically. Okay. Now, we are going to continue our Python project and we are going to start applying the post implementation. Okay. Well, uh, this is what uh, we were doing last time. So, let me start the server. Um, it is going to be Python app.py started. So, what we currently have basically um, we created a simple endpoint for the index. Then we have this API v1 users which will give us the two static users which is available uh, here. So, before we go on the post endpoint, let us also create uh, some uh, endpoint with the path parameter. So, it will give more idea. So, my idea is I want to give something like uh, slash 1, then I should get the user of the first uh, ID. Okay. Uh, currently, it gives invalid root because we are handling uh, all the other root as invalid root. Fine. First, what I want is I want a function which will do that. Okay. Uh, so, define get user by ID. So, if I pass the ID to this function, uh, it will basically loop into that uh, user for user in users. So, it will loop the user array. For each user, it will check whether this user ID equal to equal to the ID is passed. In this case, if it is true, then it will return the user object. Okay. Suppose if it is not, if this for loop is failed, then here we will put return false. So, the return false it will reach only if the for loop return does not pass through. Okay. Fine. So, what I am going to do now, I want to create a new route. right? Uh, so, let us create that. So, app dot route uh, api v1 user slash and it is going to be a dynamic value. right? So, for that how we can create in flask is with uh, like this okay, id. We can give any name and I can give it an integer. Okay. So, for this route, I want to execute a function. So, get user and I will pass an id. So, uh, it says that I have one parameter and this parameter is available here. Okay. So, if you want to just print this id, we can see the value. Let us return that id also. Okay. Actually, we do not want to print. Just to see how it works. Okay. So, pre previously it was um, like this, right? Now, we can see uh, we should get this one. Okay, got it. So, just to only it accepts strings, okay. So, we get this one, okay. I mean, uh, if you put four, whatever it come. So, now we are able to get that value. Uh, now, what we need to do uh, basically, we are going to say something like uh, user equal to get user by id, pass in that id, okay. So, that id will be passed and the user will get either a value or a false. Okay. I say if uh, user which means if it is true then I have a user object. So, return jsonify of that user. Okay. Else I would say that uh, return user not. So, let us see if this works. I saved it. Um, okay, let us say here so this is user not found that is correct. Now, we got the data. Cool. So, that is how the path parameter works. Uh, now, let us go to the post endpoint. So, what we want, uh, we want to create a new endpoint. Okay. Uh, so, let us create that at app dot route uh, is going to be the same API v1 users. Okay. So, this route will be very similar to this route to get all the users. So, by default, the route will have a get endpoint. Uh, but how do we tell now it is a post endpoint. So, basically we have a second parameter called methods where you can pass the array of methods. Okay. Let me give post. If you give a methods parameter to the route then only that particular methods are available. Okay. We can also put something like uh, we can put more methods also, uh, but now we are going to give only post. So, yes. So, that is going to be our route. So, as you might have guessed we can also do that in a single function which means uh, here we can put methods as, as both get and post and inside the same function 
we can use something like request dot method if the request dot method is get then we will return the users if it is post then we will do the rest of the operation so it is basically a style of implementation now let's keep it separate for this demo so let's create a new function called maybe uh, add user okay and uh, return uh, user will be added so first let's see if this particular endpoint works okay let me save this now the server would have been restarted okay yes it is restart, restarted uh, let's see so to test this we cannot use the browser uh, we need to use postman let's come here so this gives us the get endpoint for the two okay let me change it to post let's go to body and raw json and we can give anything we want okay the, uh, our whole idea is whatever we give uh, we are not doing anything here okay we are just uh, returning something okay let's see what happens so send we get user will be added so that's what we are returning here okay but what happened to the data we passed okay we passed a simple json but how do we receive that very simple uh, we need to uh, uh, in, import uh, something called request okay and then you come down uh, so i'm just going to say uh, no uh, print request dot json okay if you are passing a json uh, request body then it will be accessed by request dot json okay if you save this and then if you try again we get the same result but if you do if you go to the console you can see the json is we are able to print it using the request dot json okay now we want to get this dhoni or i mean the name parameter now before that uh, let's okay so here is going to be okay so request.json is going to be the object then inside i will say i want the name okay fine so this is available so which means i can uh, basically uh, get the data here in the variable like this but my whole idea is i want to create a function called uh, you know create user and pass in that name parameter okay so let's create this create user okay uh, let's go here it will get a name and then whole idea is we need to add one element to the array okay so let's do that so id equal to uh, so i want to create this id by my own so users this is the array I can get the last element by giving index minus one it's simple python thing then i will get this object okay then from here i want to know the id of it which is uh, this number two okay then i will just add plus one okay then uh, name i already have this under the name variable so what i'm going to do new user is yes, a new variable equals to a simple dictionary i will say that it has an id with the value of the id from here and then um, uh, it's going to have a name with the name coming from this variable name so once it is done i want to users this is this particular array dot append i will add the new user once that is done i will return the new user which is this particular uh, you know whatever we have added so now this function is ready create user so come down now we say create user of passing this name it will create id and then add it to the array it will return the new user so new user equal to this now instead of returning a text you can say just an if i of new user save it let's see if this works okay let's go to postman now we have the post endpoint we have the name attribute and we want to click send and here you can see we get id 3 with the name okay then if you put something then we should get id 4 and then that thing which also means now currently these four details are available in the array if you go to the get endpoint for the same thing and then click send we should be able to see all the four okay anyway um, this is not a sta um, permanent content right so it's not persistent so if we restart the server then again we'll go back to the same two uh, ids okay but if it is going to be a database then obviously instead of just appending the, to the array we will save it in the database so that next time when you do the get request we will get all the data that's how the real uh, thing work but for the demo purpose this is how we can implement a post endpoint in um, uh, flask python and then this is how we can use it so now it's time for our ibm i think okay 
So if you are using IBM IRPG, so you can still use the stocks, uh, sorry, it's not stock, I guess, Scott Clemens uh, API to invoke a post endpoint. Okay, so there are a lot of examples to that, and I will put some videos to my playlist. If you want to create um, a post endpoint, even that is possible using the our Apache HTTP, uh, you know, uh, web server available in IBM I. And I also have some videos. I will give link in the description and also in the playlist. Please go to go through it and if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the comment section and uh, we have just seen how to implement the post request. So in the upcoming videos, we will learn about other two HTTP endpoints like put and delete, uh, which is used to update a resource and also delete a resource from a server. So I hope it's interesting and uh, it's helpful for you. If you like this video, please share it with your friends uh, and uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.